So, until now for uh, quite a uh, long duration of this course, we have been discussing about 1D flows, quasi 1D flows where we make uh, the assumption that the flow uh, variables remain uniform across a certain cross section. We do not actually solve for entire flow field and the dominant approach used is uh, control volume methods where we uh, look at um, what is happening across interfaces and do not go into details of what is happening within the flow field. But now uh, in uh, real problems in actual applications we may need to know these uh, flow field details and uh, so uh, the approach has to change and so we look into um, the cases of uh, uh, solving the entire flow field. A particular approach uh, of course, uh, the complete uh, set of uh, Navier-Stokes equation for uh, compressible flows has to be solved numerically. There is no uh, analytical method to do it, but there are many approximate methods which will give us useful uh, results. Uh, one among them is if the flow, uh, if changes in the flow uh, produced by say uh, very slender bodies or air foils. Uh, thin air foils, they are all small with respect to uh, the free stream flow. So, they introduce small changes to the flow. So, that kind of uh, an approach is known as small perturbations to the main flow. So, a small perturbation theory, but before we go into small perturbations, we really have to look at the flow equations themselves. Uh, at looking at the entire uh, flow field and uh, therefore, we have to get ourselves away from control volume approach, integral formulations to differential equations and look at uh, details. Here we will be particularly looking into some uh, details of inviscid irrotational flows and uh, some good solutions some important uh, insights like Croco's theorem and how do the flow equations behave as the flow changes from subsonic to supersonic. Some important results like the prandtl glaritz rule uh, which allows extension of uh, in incompressible aerodynamic relations to compressible subsonic flows. Okay. And uh, some idea of uh, say pressure distributions over bodies uh, in when the they are very slender or the perturbation is very small and uh, in supersonic flows they can be linked only to the surface inclination. And largely this uh, outline um, follows uh, modern compressible flow by Anderson. Okay. So, uh, we will start looking at the differential equations of fluid motion and we are looking at uh, inviscid uh, flows. Therefore, uh, uh, the shear forces are not there or they are absent. Okay. So, uh, continuity equation here density is a variable. So, dou rho by dou t plus uh, del dot rho v equal to 0 uh, for a steady flow del dot rho v is 0. Momentum equation we have rho d v by d t material derivative of uh, velocities uh, the change in flux, uh, momentum flux, uh, change, rate of change of momentum is, is equal to all the forces that appear on the um, on the uh, fluid which is due to pressure, it can be due to body forces, it can be due to shear forces. In this particular case we consider only pressure forces and the others are negligible. Therefore, we come to the Euler's equation which is uh, V dot del V plus del P equal to uh, gradient of pressure is equal to 0. Then you consider uh, the energy equation where we are considering um, work uh, done heat added and change in total enthalpy yeah, okay, changes in uh, total enthalpy. This is the differential equation where d by dt corresponds to a uh, material derivative. If we consider adiabatic flow, no work done, no external work, then the corresponding and steady flow, uh, then essentially the uh, total enthalpy 
should remain a constant. Okay. So, uh, you have continuity uh, momentum gives you Euler's equation in the differential form and uh, the condition of adiabatic flow with uh, other uh, effects being neglected uh, no work done uh, gives you that uh, the total enthalpy remains uh, constant. Okay. So, now we look at uh, how these equations can be uh, manipulated. To look at that we uh, said we are looking at inviscid a rotational framework. What do you mean by uh, irrotational framework? We are looking at uh, vorticity uh, which uh, corresponds to uh, rotation in the uh, fluid element. Uh, when there is no rotation then uh, we say that the flow is irrotational or vorticity is 0. Vorticity is related to the uh, velocity field by a curl. So, this is the relation for vorticity. Uh, essentially for irrotational flows curl is 0, curl of velocity is 0, where velocity is a vector and if we consider a 3 dimensional field it is u i plus v j plus w k. So, this is the general form. Uh, now, uh, let us uh, take a look at the inviscid flow which is represented by the Euler flow, uh, Euler equation V dot del V plus a gradient of P by rho equal to 0. Now, V dot del V uh, this term uh, can be represented in terms of uh, uh, del of V square by 2 and uh, the curl. So, curl is over here this is an identity it is a vector identity and v cross uh, del cross v. Okay. So, uh, we can substitute this uh, into Euler equation and we get here uh, del v square by 2 plus del p by rho uh, is equal to v dot del uh, cross v that is this is curl of velocity. Now, if you try to integrate it along a certain path dr, okay, if you uh, try to integrate this particular uh, equation along a certain path and uh, then uh, this will become a total uh, derivative del dot dr along that particular path dv square by 2 plus integral dp by rho along the particular path dr that is a directional derivative now and this integral for uh, the component v cross del cross v in the direction dr. Okay. So, if we consider an irrotational flow then del cross v is 0 everywhere then this term uh, the right hand term completely drops out. Therefore, we get integral dv square by 2 uh, plus integral dp by rho equal to 0. Uh, if you consider the case of an incompressible fluid this must be quite familiar to uh, all of you it is nothing but V 2 square minus V 1 square by 2 plus P 2 minus P 1 by rho equal to 0 or this is uh, P by rho plus V square by 2 is equal to a constant which is nothing but the Bernoulli's equation that is for uh, a incompressible constant density flow. So, this is uh, it turns out to be the Bernoulli's equation, but here it is general Euler equation. Uh, we cannot uh, do this integration d p by rho. Okay. So, uh, v square by 2 can be integrated. So, v square by 2 plus d p by rho uh, it in an irrotational flow it is constant everywhere, but if there is uh, rotational uh, if it is rotational and vorticity exists then it is constant along directions where v cross del cross v dot dr is 0 which is true for a streamline. So, uh, it is uh, for rotational flows this parameter or this uh, uh, particular uh, combination is constant along a streamline. So, that uh, distinction uh, must have been familiar to you in the context of Bernoulli's uh, equation, but it is uh, true in the case of Euler's equation only thing now it is a compressible flow uh, density is a variable. So,
so it cannot be uh, you cannot easily integrate this as you did for the uh, Bernoulli's equation. So, uh, the consequence of having vorticity and the rotational flow uh, should be understood in this um, context. Okay. So, another important uh, sort of uh, theorem which comes about from this inviscid considerations and what we had discussed previously, uh, the Euler's equation written in terms of vorticity. Here we have the term uh, del p by uh, rho. Now, we consider the uh, equation for enthalpy the Gibbs equation T delta s is equal to uh, the changes in enthalpy del h minus del p by rho minus V d p V is 1 by rho. So, uh, this del p by rho can be written in terms of T delta s that is change in entropy and entropy gradient and gradient of enthalpy. So, if you replace that, so then you can get a relation between vorticity, uh, enthalpy and entropy gradients along with uh, of course, kinetic energy gradient, but these two together taken h plus v square by 2 is total enthalpy. So, it you get um, v cross del cross v is uh, gradient of total enthalpy minus T delta s. If you had considered an adiabatic flow which is what we have been considering here, H naught is constant. So, gradient of H naught is not there. So, therefore, we get the uh, uh, information that if there are any gradients of entropy, if it is an isentropic flow and entropy is constant everywhere, uh, then the consequence is that there is no vorticity. So, if you consider uh, uh, that is uh, adiabatic isentropic flows. So, isentropic flows essentially are uh, irrotational flows, but uh, if you consider uh, there are uh, there is rotational uh, effects in the flow or rotationality is there in the flow, then uh, directly from this equation it is seen that there should be entropy gradients. Where is this uh, uh, sort of uh, applied? If you consider uh, any uh, generic say body in a supersonic flow, uh, so this is a certain body placed in uh, supersonic flow, then we know there should be a shock and if the body is blunt, you will have a bow kind of a shock where um, the uh, shock has a curvature. So, you see that the shock has curvature along this direction. That means, that every point uh, along the shock. Uh, the shock strength varies. Okay, so, now we know that across a shock there is a uh, entropy jump. Okay, so, there is an entropy jump. So, if you take any particular streamline as it goes across the shock, there is an entropy jump, it has a different entropy. If you take different streamlines, they have different entropies. So, downstream of the shock in this region which is marked by the brown circle, in front of this bow kind of in front of this blunt kind of a shape uh, having a bow shock, you have uh, entropy gradients. That means, the flow is no longer um, uh, uh, irrotational, it has rotational, uh, it is rotational. So, flow is rotational, there are entropy gradients in this kind of a case, but if you consider a case like a planar shock uh, that is suppose you consider a wedge kind of a shock. Mm. Then here you see that uh, you have an oblique shock, an oblique shock turns all the streamlines by the same angle. So, streamlines were parallel earlier, they are parallel after the shock, they have just been deflected by a certain angle. There is a uh, entropy jump across the shock, but after the shock there is no entropy gradient. So, before the shock there is in, uh, it is a constant entropy, after the shock it is another constant entropy, only that entropy is changing. That means, these are cases where flow is mm, rotational. So, uh, this is uh, very important as to how we can apply different approaches in solving uh, such flow field problems and the Crocos theorem connects. Um, vorticity with entropy gradients. 
So, uh, generally uh, the condition of irrotationality is or uh, irrotational flow is that uh, del uh, that is the curl of velocity 0. So, you get uh, relationships between uh, the different components of uh, the velocity that is dou u by dou y is equal to dou v by dou x which might be familiar for a two dimensional flow we always uh, have this uh, particular uh, form dou u by dou y is equal to dou v by dou x, but in, in a general three dimensional flow it can be uh, evaluated for all other components also. So, uh, we are looking at irrotational flows. So, if you consider uh, irrotational flows then uh, uh, a vector. So, if you have a vector uh, and it is uh, a, it is uh, solenoidal or it does not have a curl uh, then uh, that particular vector A can be represented as uh, the gradient of a scalar ok gradient of a scalar. So, this is also an identity ok this is a vector identity curl of gradient is equal to 0 means that you can always define a scalar function or a scalar potential. So, if you consider irrotational flows then we can define a velocity potential phi such that velocity is a gradient of uh, phi. So, u is the, the uh, dou phi by dou x, v is dou phi by dou y, z is dou phi by dou z. Mm, you would have become familiar with this kind of approach in your fluid mechanics classes on potential flow theory and so on. Uh, this is the same approach, but now it is being applied to a um, compressible flow and uh, in a compressible flow density is changing. So, if you look at the continuity equation uh, which is uh, essentially dou by dou x of rho u uh, plus dou by dou y of rho v plus dou by dou z of rho w equal to 0 and consider the velocity potential phi and u is then dou phi by dou x we can substitute uh, those terms here in the equation and we get dou by dou x rho phi x uh, plus dou by dou y rho phi y. This particular equation is then expanded uh, in terms you have to do the differentiation. So, uh, dou, dou by dou x of phi x is phi x x uh, which is nothing but dou square phi by dou x square. This is dou square phi by dou y square. This is dou square phi by dou z square. Okay and uh, dou, dou rho by dou x, dou rho by dou y and dou rho by dou z. Now, uh, we can use the Euler's equation to uh, try and remove rho from this particular uh, uh, expression. dp is equal to rho by 2 uh, dv square, uh, rho v dv is written as uh, rho by 2 dv square which is uh, d u square plus b square plus w square and that can be written in terms of the derivatives of potential dou phi by dou x and we use uh, the definition of speed of sound because it is an isentropic flow uh, steady isentropic flow. So, you can use dp by d rho is a square at constant entropy combine them together and we get uh, d rho is equal to minus rho by a square d of phi x square plus phi y square plus phi z square. So, now considering changes in uh, every direction which is x direction, y direction, uh, z direction separately we have to differentiate this um, separately and uh, put them uh, into the uh, continuity equation and arrive at a final uh, equation for the velocity potential. In case of uh, compressible flows here you can see this is the final equation which is 1 minus phi x square by a square phi x x plus 1 minus phi y square by a square phi y y plus 1 minus phi z square by a square phi z z. So, uh, minus phi x phi y by a square phi x y minus uh, 2 phi x phi z by a square phi x z minus 2 phi y phi z by a square phi y z equal to uh, 0. So, uh, now this equation 
uh, written only in terms of uh, the velocity potential is the velocity potential equation it is a general equation of course it has the term a square um, which has to be we have to uh, look at a way to calculate a square but otherwise it is only in terms of the velocity potential okay um, so now how to get a square into this we can use the fact that it is a uh, adiabatic flow h naught is constant so if you take a calorically perfect gas then you can express uh, the equation cpt plus v square by 2 this is cpt naught okay so this can be expressed in terms of a naught and this we had done very early in the class a square by gamma minus 1 plus v square by 2 is equal to a naught square by gamma minus 1 aware now v square is u square plus v square plus w square where phi x square plus phi y square plus phi z square. So, um, since you can know a naught it is a constant within the flow. So, now you have an equation to relate a square with uh, a naught square. So, uh, one should notice that uh, this equation now is a uh, non-linear equation and it is general equation. Uh, it applies to any rotational isentropic flow mm, it can be subsonic uh, transonic supersonic or hypersonic and if you consider uh, that uh, a goes to infinity so if you consider that which is corresponding to an incompressible flow the speed of sound goes to infinity infinity uh, in an incompressible flow then all these terms drop off uh, slowly these the different terms which contain 1 by a square drop off and then you get only phi x x plus phi y y plus phi z z equal to uh, 0 which is the familiar uh, Laplace equation potential flow equation for a rotational flow. So, in incompressible flow. So, uh, it is a general equation and it contains the incompressible part also. So, this is the velocity potential equation and if we consider uh, just the 2D velocity potential equation let us try to see uh, how this uh, uh, velocity potential equation behaves. Uh, so, and look at uh, uh, how the partial differential equation is seen. So, uh, writing phi x square uh, as u square phi y square as v square and phi x y is u uh, phi x phi y basically phi x phi y is u v. Uh, so, you get 1 minus u square by a square phi x x minus 2 u v by a square phi x y plus 1 minus v square by a square phi y y equal to 0. To understand the behavior of these uh, equations uh, uh, second order partial uh, differential equation. Uh, we look at the determinant which is b square minus uh, 4ac and uh, you can express this and it comes out as m square minus 1. Now, we know that if uh, the determinant is uh, negative then the partial differential equation behaves in an elliptic manner. So, elliptic example of uh, elliptic partial differential equation is the Laplace equation and um, a canonical form which you would have come across in your uh, studies is uh, the Laplace equation and characteristic of uh, such kind of equations is that uh, um, any uh, change in any part will influence the entire domain that we are considering which is uh, true when uh, we consider steady subsonic flows. Uh, information sort of propagates everywhere in um, subsonic flows changes in pressure can be felt uh, the effects of that can be felt uh, everywhere. Uh, while uh, if we take m equal to 1 uh, then it is uh, exactly 0 it behaves in a parabolic manner uh, which is uh, similar to the heat equation uh, which you would have uh, come across in your studies. While if d is uh, if you take m greater than 0 m greater than 1 then determinant is greater than 0 or uh, there are real roots to this determinant. So, that means this uh, behaves 
uh, more uh, like it is a hyperbolic behavior. So, supersonic flows steady supersonic flows behave in hyperbolic manner uh, which is very important and a very um, a well known equation which behaves similarly is the wave equation. So, we find that uh, in supersonic flows the behavior is very much like that of a wave equation. Uh, in that sense information propagation in supersonic flows happen only along specific uh, direction it is like a wave uh, propagating. Uh, so, uh, all uh, regions of the supersonic flow are not affected by small changes happening or uh, changes in pressure happening at particular points. Only when the uh, wave uh, or a say a Mach line passes along uh, a particular point, uh, they connect the two points, then uh, they um, affect those points. So, there is a directionality in uh, supersonic flows. We will see this again and again in the subsequent uh, classes. Somewhat mixed behavior is seen in uh, transonic flows where both subsonic and supersonic parts can be uh, present. But essentially what you have to understand is that the velocity potential equation in its full form uh, which is what is uh, given over here is a nonlinear equation it is uh, it has to be there is no analytical approach to solve it and uh, it, you can only do it in a numerical uh, manner. So, uh, an approach that is taken when we can consider uh, that uh, uh, the flow that we are trying or we are interested to solve introduces only small changes to a mean flow uh, can be taken and uh, that approach is known as the small perturbation uh, theory. And we will look at how these equations change if we consider such a uh, small perturbation. And then uh, we will look uh, first we look at uh, subsonic flows subsequently after that we look at uh, how uh, things happen in supersonic flows. Uh, this is a very important uh, uh, information that uh, subsonic flows uh, behave in an elliptic manner similar to Laplace equation and supersonic flows behave in an hyperbolic manner similar to uh, wave equation that you have to really understand. And it has consequences in how these uh, equations are solved. So, next class we will move towards uh, uh, application of small perturbation theory in uh, subsonic flows. So, uh, so thank you.